Hi, this is Crystal from DaughtersOfTheCreator.com. Thank you for joining me for another Sundays at 7. Wasn't sure if I was going to be able to do this with it being the holiday weekend and so much going on. And if you're like me, I've got so much to do. Um, I still have to wrap gifts. I have to clean up my house. So I'm actually working tomorrow, so I got to prepare for work. And uh, so I wasn't sure, but um, I just uh, wanted a chance to share something that the Holy Spirit had put on my heart that I hope will be a blessing to you. And uh, it's about giving the best gifts. Because we serve a God, you know, I remember um, reading the scripture that uh, every good and perfect gift comes down from the Father of lights with whom there is no shifting shadow. And I remember praying that prayer to God about every time, hi, how are you doing? Every time I'm, I'm asking God for something and, and trying to, uh, trying to uh, get uh, what is it that he wants for me, you know, when I'm praying for a car or praying for a house or whatever I'm praying for. And I'm like, every good gift comes from you, God. So I'm depending on you to open or close this door if this gift is to come from you. And we think about how God gives us the gift of salvation. He gives us the gift of unconditional love. He gives us peace that passes all understanding. And I see all those gifts. And why wouldn't, want, why wouldn't he want his children to be giver of good gifts? So today I want to talk or teach a little bit about what gifts we can give. And the first, I'm going to use the word uh, gifts as an acronym. And the first one is G, which is grace. And the scripture says, and from his fullness, we have all received grace upon grace, John 1, 16. And from his fullness, we have all received grace upon grace. So there's a little something in my way, so I'm sorry if I can't see your names today, all right? Um, but when I think about God's grace, which is his unmerited favor, basically his grace is saying, I will, give, I will give you what you need. I will take care of you. But it's not going to be based on you deserving it, that you did everything right and like, bam, here's what you get. Now, there is blessing in being all obedience, and I'm not taking away from that. But any one of us who are true believers in Jesus Christ know there are times that God gives us stuff, and we sit there and like, I know I don't deserve this. I don't deserve for you to do that for me. And we have opportunities to also give other people grace. And this is different than forgiveness. I'm going to talk a little bit about forgiveness. This is, you know, you know, have you ever had someone kind of snap on you because they were, weren't feeling good or they had a bad day? And you say, you know what? I'm going to give you grace. And basically what we're saying is, you know, I'm going to give you a break today because you're going through a lot. And I realize you are going to be sorry tomorrow for what you said or what you did. So I'm just going to give you grace because you know what? There's going to be a day when I'm going to need grace or I'm going to need somebody to come to me and say, you know what, uh, Crystal, you, you, you messed that one up. But you know what? I'm going to give you another chance. And so what we can do, especially during this holiday season, People are stressed. I mean, I was out there yesterday driving. People driving crazy. People have attitudes. They're honking all the time. And I'm going, it's Christmas. Calm down, you know? And so I find myself just holding back. You know what? I'm going to give them grace. I don't, I don't, I'm not that much of a hurry. I'm, I'm not that stressed, you know? I'm going to keep myself calm. So as we're going throughout this Christmas break and holiday and spending time with family and just give people grace. Just don't take things personally. Just move along. Just cover it in God's grace and just keep on going because sooner or later, we're going to need some of that grace ourselves, right? So then I is integrity. And the scripture is whoever walks in integrity walks securely, but he who makes his way crooked will be found out. Proverbs chapter 10, verse 9. Um, one of my very all-time uh, quotes is from Donald Miller, and he said, What I say I believe is not what I believe. What I believe is what I do. Get it? What I say I believe is not what I believe. I believe based on what I do. And, and, and that's why like a lot of times people look at the church and they're like, oh, there's so many hypocrites in the church. I'll never go to church because they, they look at what people are doing. They look at what they're saying and they're like, how can you, how can you represent Christ? You know, and giving the gift of integrity means I'm going to choose to tell the truth. I'm going to choose to do that, which is noble, which is respectful. And what is the right thing to do? I mean, and it seems like 
in this world, sometimes it's just, you know, everything's so gray and blurry, but really God's just calling, can, can God's people just be people of integrity? Can we just tell the truth? Can we just do the right thing? And that's a great gift. You know, I think of that scripture and I think it's Proverbs 14.1. I think it's Proverbs 14.1. It might be 12.1, but it says a good name is better than riches. Meaning when people hear your name, whatever your name is, and for me, Crystal McDowell, when they hear my name, do they hear, oh man, she really lives out her faith. You know, if she tells me she's going to do something, she's going to follow through with it. Or if they hear your name or my name, do they say, have you seen them? Because they owe me money. You know, that person lied to me. That person took advantage of me. I think as believers, we should be the light. You know, God said that we're the light of the world and just be people of integrity. Choose to do what is right. And not to say that perfect, I didn't say do what's perfect because only Jesus is perfect. But when you know the right thing to do, do it. And when you don't do the right thing, confess it, admit it, instead of actually acting like you didn't do anything wrong, be a people of integrity. And I have found integrity starts in our home and it starts in our hearts and then it hits the world. If we can be true to God, true to ourselves and true to those who know us best, there's no problem when you're at work or at school or in your community. <clears throat> So, <clears throat> sorry, F is for forgiveness, bearing with one another, and if one has a complaint against another, forgiving each other, as the Lord has forgiven you, so you must also forgive, Colossians 3.13, and I know I've, I've spoken on forgiveness many, many times, but giving of forgiveness, giving the gift of forgiveness is a choice. It's not a feeling, it's not a have to, it's a choice to be obedient to God's word. We forgive because God says, forgive as you have been forgiven. Now, it's not based on our feelings because if we were honest, our feelings would be like, this person is never going to be forgiven. I'm never going to let them go. But if we base it on, this is what God's word says. I choose to forgive you or I choose to forgive because sometimes we can't you know, some people we have to forgive, they may not receive our forgiveness. They may think, hey, I did you wrong and I'll do it again. So if they have an unrepentant heart, it's not that we have to go to a person and say, I forgive you if they're unrepentant. We go to God and say, God, I forgive this person. And Lord, heal my heart, heal, heal my feelings, heal, heal the things that this person, this destruction, emotional, physical, financial, whatever that person did to me, heal me so that I don't have to have a bitter heart. So I don't have to carry the weight of being um, uh, unforgiveness. And as I said before, I heard a preacher say, uh, carrying an unforgiving heart is like preparing poison for that person and then you drink it. Or building a prison and then you put yourself in it. You know, that's what unforgiveness does. And that's why if we give the gift of forgiveness, then it, it frees us up, you know? So um, God is the great, um, Avenger. He will uh, bring out justice and vengeance on those who've done us wrong. He's not putting it on us to do it. Okay. T is for time. Um, Psalms 31 15. My times are in your hand. Rescue me from the hand of my enemies and from my persecutors. Um, excuse me. Giving people our time is an opportunity to value their existence. And I know it sounds crazy, like Crystal, seriously, but there's something about when somebody says, I want to take the time to talk to you. I want to take the time to help you. I want to take the time just to see how you're doing. Um, that means a lot to a lot of people because we have a lot of people who are just they just feel like they don't exist, like they don't matter. They're there, but nobody notices them. Nobody talks to them. Nobody asks them how they're doing today. We as believers should take the time to ask the Holy Spirit, give me a willingness. Give me to see the hurting people around me that I may not see. You know, in our human frailty, we, like me, I get busy, I get going and um, neglect to maybe see some things. But if I start the day in prayer and have this Holy Spirit awareness, I'm going to notice people and I'm going to give them my time. And, um, and that says, hey, you're, wor you're made in the image of God. You're worth something. You're worth my time. So our time is precious and limited, but God allows us to redeem the time and serving and loving and witnessing to one another. Which brings me to my last one, S, salvation story. Um, the scripture comes from John 4, 28. So the woman left her water jar 
and went away into town and said to the people, come and see, come and see a man who told me all I ever did. Can this be the Christ? John 4.28. And if you're familiar with the Samaritan woman, basically um, in, in that time, Samaritans and Jews did not deal with each other. But Jesus had a conversation not just with a Samaritan, but with a Samaritan woman, which was definitely a taboo thing for a man and a woman who aren't married or related to have a conversation. And she's of the Samaritan who Jews never talked to anyway. But as God, as Jesus started talking to this woman, uh, she realized that she needed to get herself together. And the scripture says she went into town and told them, come and see this man. And based on her testimony, people came from the town to know Jesus. And, and I think sometimes, you know, growing up, um, there was always this big, well, we're going to go and witness on the streets and we're going to go knock on doors. And, and there's nothing wrong with that. But sometimes people tend to make it so complicated and we're already dealing with feelings of fear and hesitation. I'm like, oh, what if I tell them about Jesus and now we can't be friends or they're gonna think I'm weird or they're gonna be hard to approach. And uh, this last summer I had an opportunity to be a part of a, a missions trip uh, through a group called Spread Truth Ministries where we go for a week and minister to people in New York City in the streets and parks. and. Um, and it was just a crazy experience anyway, but it was an awesome experience. I think in this, uh, in this culture where so many people have headphones on or they're looking at their phones and you don't know, like, should I interrupt them? What, you know, and, and you really had to rely on the Holy Spirit. Like, what do you want me to say? But one of the things they kept saying in this ministry the whole time was, um, just share your story. Don't complicate it. Just share your story. And to me... The salvation story, the gift of the salvation story, if you're a believer in Jesus Christ, you have a story. You were once in darkness, and now you're in light. And, and now that you're in the light, you see the hand of God on you every single day, answering your prayers, um, his presence that fills you with peace when everybody else at, in work is full of anxiety. Am I going to lose my job? Am I going to keep my job? You've got peace. You got peace whether you got a lot of money in the bank or no money in the bank. You got peace whether your relationships are wonderful or they're, or they're horrible. You just got that presence. You got that that other people don't have. That's your story. That's your salvation story. And how do you know, if you don't share your story, how do you know that someone who's sitting right next to you that you see every day might benefit from your story? And it's a gift. It's a gift that you have because it's your story. Nobody else can tell your story, you know? And, uh, and I saw some amazing things when I was in New York. And I remember I was talking to this young man in one of the parks, and uh, he ended up giving his life to Christ. And I even told him, I said, I saw you way over on the other side of the park sitting on the bench, and I knew I had to go talk to you. But then he had got up and moved, and I didn't know him. I looked up, he was gone. And I was really disappointed because I really wanted to talk to him, and he had moved to another table. So I had an opportunity to talk to him. And... Uh, one of the things that came out of that conversation at the very end, I told him how I saw him, and he said, at that moment you saw me, I asked God, show me, show me. And I'm questioning God. And see, I didn't know that. All I knew is I felt um, led to talk to that young man who um, came to know Christ in that park that day. And so I just want to encourage you, give the gift of your salvation story. So just to repeat, Using the acronym GIFTS, G is to give grace, I is to give integrity, F is to give forgiveness, T is to give time, and S is salvation story. What's your story? And um, I just want to encourage you, if you have an opportunity, um, spend a lot of time with family and friends um, sharing the gospel. Live it, walk it, talk it. Don't be phony, don't be fake, be real about I'm weak or I need prayer. But just uh, be Christ in this season so that people can see that Jesus is real. Um, I just want to encourage you, if you haven't already, uh, check out daughtersofthecreator.com, my website. And you can get it on Messenger. You can get it through uh, daily devotionals, through email, and share with your friends. Also, if you haven't had an opportunity, pick up 
Seriously God books that are available on Amazon.com. And uh, I pray that your Christmas and your week will be blessed. Thank you so much for joining me, guys. I'm, I'm so grateful that you join me every Sunday. And uh, again, until next Sunday, have a blessed week. And Merry Christmas. Bye for now.